Okay, so my favorite style of cocktail is a Manhattan, and my favorite style of whiskey is bourbon. But every time I've tried mixing bourbon into a Manhattan, it just it, it just doesn't work for me. I don't like it. It's it's disgusting. Until I tried adding coffee. So I would be remiss if I didn't first admit that I learned this technique from Nick over at Cocktail Chemistry. And I liked the idea of pouring cocktails through coffee so much that I made this wooden frame just for that purpose. Now as I said, rye always seems to me to be the best choice for a Manhattan, even though in general I drink a lot more bourbon than rye. But in building this recipe, I found Wild Turkey 101 to be the perfect whiskey for blending coffee flavor into the Manhattan. For filming purposes, I rebottled some of it in this pint bottle, which I think is going to become a sort of mini bourbon infinity bottle. Choosing vermouth is just as important as choosing whiskey, and even though this Dolan Rouge is my absolute favorite for a normal Manhattan, I think that the strong chocolate flavor of Coqui Vermouth di Torino will work a lot better alongside the coffee we're going to be adding. For bitters, I'm keeping it totally standard with Angostura, but you could always add some chocolate bitters to broaden your vermouth options. For coffee, here are a couple good quality options from Starbucks, one blonde and one medium. Both should be available year-round in most countries. I'm going to use the Sirens blend, which I think is one of the best core coffees Starbucks produces, and a good all-around coffee for a variety of applications. All right, to put this all together takes a little bit of extra work, but let's start by rinsing the filter paper with boiling water. We don't want any kind of funky papery taste that might be clinging to the paper. I used another pour over I had handy so that I wouldn't preheat my glass brewer, but you could always just rinse it again in cold after the fact if you only wanted to use one brew cone. While that drains, I'm going to build the cocktail. Two dashes of Angostura, that first burp didn't count, one ounce of vermouth, two ounces of bourbon, and set that aside. Next, I'll weigh out 15 grams of coffee beans and grind them just a touch finer than I normally would for a paper filtered pour over. Then we can put our stand, brew cone, rinsed paper, and ground coffee all together. And yes, I know my right hand looks a little gnarly, what with the longer nails from being a professional guitarist and the eczema that I inherited from my dad. Yeah, thanks, Pops. I thought about buying some white gloves like a posh butler would wear while butling about in some big English manor house, but I decided I didn't really want to be that pretentious, and the money would probably be better spent on more whiskey, so you guys can just bear with me. One more step before we pour. I need to add ice to our cocktail and stir it down till it's nice and chilled and properly diluted. Using a shaker is always fun, but there's something so soothing about stirring down a beautiful cocktail. And I think drinks taste better when putting them together makes you feel just a little bit less stressed. And now, the moment at last, we pour. and the cocktail is finished draining into the coupe, remove the brewer and stand, and garnish with your choice of a cocktail cherry or an orange twist. I choose both. I like to put my cherry into the bottom of the glass, but use a cocktail pick if you prefer. And I like to use the largest available kitchen knife for trimming the garnish. I think it tastes better that way. Anyway, after all that, we are done. All right, well, I guess it's time to give this thing a taste. Wow. So I'll be straight up honest with you guys. I have not tried this exact recipe before, meaning I have not tried it with the Koki Vermouth di Torino and the Wild Turkey together. I've used the Wild Turkey before with other vermouths and was really happy with it. I bought the Vermouth di Torino for another video and after tasting it went, wow, this would be perfect in the pour over Manhattan. You could have great results if you use the uh, Dolan Vermouth or a Martini and Rossi, whatever your favorite is. Carpano, I think, is what Nick over at Cocktail Chemistry used originally, and he went with some black walnut bitters. But I think a simpler recipe, if you want to eliminate multiple bitters, uh, would be to use the Coqui Vermouth di Torino. Beyond a normal Manhattan, I think it's got this like peppery note, almost like a jalapeno flavor. I have no idea where that's coming from. That's just a flavor that's firing off in my head. I think it's the particular coffee that I'm using with that Coqui Vermouth di Torino. It really plays up the chocolate flavor that comes through really strongly. 
if uh, somebody had made this for me and didn't tell me, I would have assumed that there was chocolate bitters in it just from the flavor of the vermouth and the coffee together, which is a really, really pleasant surprise. It's not really a surprise. That's kind of why I use that vermouth, actually. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, hit the button. If you didn't like the video, hit the other button and let me know why in the comments down below. I want to say thank you for watching. My name is Luke. This is the homemade edition, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.